So, folks, one of my favorite things is when a long-term scheme against Donald Trump finally pays dividends. And that's exactly what's happening today. And it's no mistake that we're learning about it on this day that's about Americans coming together against, you know, enemies, be they foreign or in this case domestic, who have tried to take away their rights and freedoms. And Donald Trump is at the top of the list. So hit the like and subscribe button as we track Jack's brilliant brilliant Independence Day bombshell against Donald Trump because what he's done is he's revealed that he's been doing something all along. Yes, he's been releasing information. Yes, he's been making it clear he's got the real dirt on Trump, but he just not only gave further updates on all of the new witnesses he's got against Trump, including his own legal team. We'll get to that. But he made one particular announcement that really feeds into the fact that he's making this investigation into Trump a truly national and maybe even international examination of Trump. And it's something that he did when he first started the job, but we're just finding it about uh, finding out about it today on Independence Day. So watch all this and see if you can spot that moment, what the journalists are finally reporting on from Jack. And when you see it, write it in the comments, because guys, it is historic. What, what does that mean to you? How do those usually go? So when there's a proffer agreement, essentially it's called queen for a day. Everything that you say in that meeting cannot be used against you with a few exceptions, namely if you lie. Also allows the prosecutors to use information you provide to pursue leads. But generally speaking, it provides protection for the person coming in under that agreement. And the general idea here, Lisa, is that it, it's a kind of what do you got? Do we want to make a deal? Um, but it signals, right? I mean, you're only doing this if you're interested in a deal, right? Absolutely. You only do it if you're interested in a deal. And I would say to you, Chris, that Rudy Giuliani is not only interested in a deal with Jack Smith, he's interested in a deal with Fonnie Willis. And that has to be one of the reasons we know about this. Mm. You have to ask yourself, who has an incentive to let CNN and the New York Times know that Rudy Giuliani went in for the proffer meeting? Well, I would venture to guess those are people close to Rudy Giuliani and not people close to the special counsel. Why? Because they want Fonnie Willis to understand that he is close to potentially cutting a deal with the Department of Justice and try and convince her that it's in her interest to do the same. Oh, that's interesting. Why? Why? Say more about the logic there. I think the logic is you don't want to cut one deal if you still have exposure in another. Certainly place. not. It's like, right? oh, great. Now I'm going to get indicted in Fulton County. And Fulton County might be a worse place to get indicted, yeah. not because the crimes necessarily carry more time. But if you think about serving time in a Georgia prison versus a federal prison, the Department of Justice knows full well how bad Georgia prisons are. Yeah. They are in the middle of a civil rights investigation into Georgia prisons, as our colleague Joyce Vance reminded me earlier today. So. OK, so let's say there's a proffer agreement going on here. Right. And he's talking about cooperation. So now my question to you, Christy, is on the privilege question. So we've already seen privilege peers. I mean, Trump and his lawyers is like a whole thing. And unlike I think we could all agree, like unlike anything any of us have ever seen, like I've never seen someone and their lawyers have this much legal exposure ever. Right. Fair to say. Michael Cohen, you got Evan Corcoran, right? So we know that, you know, a federal district judge found that it was more likely than not a crime had been committed between Donald Trump and John Eastman and issued a ruling to pierce uh, uh, attorney client privilege there. They got, they were able to pierce attorney client privilege in the case of Evan Corcoran in the documents case. In this case, can you voluntarily cooperate against your own client? Well, a lot of what they are looking at for Rudy Giuliani is not legal advice. In fact, the White House Counsel's Office told him this whole fake elector scheme is blatantly illegal. Right. So they're saying it's outside the purview. It's not uh, legal. If it's not legal advice and what they were actually doing was engaging in a political strategy right. to try and overturn the election. There's ample evidence of that. When Rudy Giuliani had his law license suspended, the 33 page opinion goes through a litany of all of the false statements that Rudy Giuliani went into that were factually false and that he knew to be false. Certainly possible. Look, Trump has so much uh, potential criminal exposure on so many different levels. 
that, you know, any single person could theoretically bring him down. But I wonder if Susie Wiles is the person because she's a pretty seasoned pro. And I think she probably just would have she switched from DeSantis to Trump with the hopes of helping Trump win. Yeah. And uh, Kurt, Trump has a new strategy here. I mean, he's like the way he wants to deal with this tape fiasco is saying, um, you know, the comments were just bravado. And I got to say, for me to hear Trump kind of say that he was just full of hot air or bravado or, you know, just blustering in of itself is quite telling. It, it, it sounds like he's getting desperate if he's if he's trying to diminish this by saying it's bravado. Uh, I think that if your defense for being caught on tape talking about the things that he's talking about is, well, I didn't really mean it. I was just kidding. I think you're in a lot of legal trouble. Uh, you don't oftentimes see Donald Trump try to walk away from his own words. In fact, he's quite known for doubling down on the things that he says, for meaning every word that he says. Uh, that's kind of his whole shtick, right? I'm, I'm going to go out there and say right. all the things that everyone else is, is too afraid to say out loud. Well, now he's been caught red-handed. It's a smoking gun. And he's going to try to convince all of us, well, I didn't really mean what I said. I don't think that's really going to work. And I think that he knows deep down he is in so much trouble. I mean, how many times are we going to catch this guy on audio tape Seriously. admitting to committing crimes? Well, the funny thing is also to your point on the uh, in reference to the Georgia recording, now he walks around telling everyone I'm a legitimate person. I'm a legitimate person. <laughs> that was a totally legitimate phone call. I'm a legitimate person. Um, Renato, I got to ask you about this. Uh, reporting from the Washington Post, and, get me, and let me get your reaction to it. This was um, new reporting from the Washington Post that Trump tried to pressure uh, Governor Doug Ducey, who was the, then at the time the uh, Arizona governor, to overturn the state's presidential election results in 2020, saying if enough fraudulent votes could be found, it would overcome his loss in uh, that state. The size and the scope, it seems, of Jack Smith's January 6th investigation is expanding. I mean, we've we've been focused on Georgia. We know about the electro the uh, elector scheme. But now this new reporting from Washington uh, from The Washington Post suggests um, there is a lot of more. There's a lot of substance. Well, I think what it shows is a pattern of behavior, uh, behavior. Eamon. In other words, a, a common schemer plan. You know, M Molly had mentioned the Fulton County case. You know, there, of course, he was pressuring Brad Raffensperger, the secretary of state. There was also a call to a man who's now deceased, uh, who I believe there was a recording as well, to the Speaker of the House in Georgia. Here we have another piece where he's engaging in similar behavior. He's trying to pressure a governor in Arizona. We also know about his efforts for state legislators in Michigan. I really could see a kind of a scheme that is charged that is broader than just one state. I also think that evidence could be relevant in a, in a Georgia case. Because it really goes to show his intent. It shows that he wasn't just fumbling over his words. He wasn't mistaken when he was talking to uh, Brad Ravisberger. It was part of a common plan to overturn the election. Really quickly, Renato, where would you bring a case like that that is multi-state? If you're talking about Georgia, Arizona, Michigan, places where there may have been an elaborate scheme to overturn it, do you do it in Washington, D.C., because that's where the president was at the time, potentially or allegedly orchestrating all of this? Or do you go to different states? I would go to Washington, D.C. That's where the grand jury uh, is that he's using. Uh, the judges there are familiar with that uh, with that grand jury and have been making rulings. That would make a lot of sense. But you know what? I would not rule out state cases outside of Georgia. Sure. It's not past the time for, for example, Arizona or Michigan to conduct their own investigation. All right. Renato, Molly, Kurt, stick around. We've got a lot more to discuss after that. Let me start with you, Caroline, just on this extraordinary and very detailed piece of reporting at what Jack Smith has turned to, who he's turning to for it and why. Take us through it. You know, Nicole, I think what's important to remember about this uh, great reporting by my colleagues, especially that whopper of an email from Jason Miller, who's still working on Donald Trump's 2024 campaign. Uh, in this email, he's complaining, you know, we obviously have some questions about this BS that's being presented in all of these campaign ads that are supposed to scare people into thinking that there is election fraud. 
Remember that four days into being named special counsel, Jack Smith asked a series of states in a subpoena for all of their communications with these precise lawyers, a group of about 13 to 20 different Trump lawyers, any communications they had with state election officials and others about all manner of things, including the validity of the election and about the fake elector scheme. So four days into his job, this is the kind of data and information and communications that Jack Smith was seeking. Now we're seeing some of the fruits of his labor and also seeing, I think, Nicole, the trail that Jack Smith is trying to follow. That trail is, did people know this claim was completely bogus? Did they raise money off of it? And then after making fraudulent claims and making money, what did they use the money for? Was there also a fraudulent claim about how the money would be used? Did they comply with the law and how it was actually spent? There are a lot of questions about that as well. So you can see all of this. Rudy is screwed and he's afraid of both Jack, but also what's happening down in Georgia. And as we talked about earlier, you think, okay, those are separate cases. And indeed they are like Willis is doing their own thing. Smith is doing his own thing, even though they're broadly part of, you know, this, this attack on democracy, this broad coup attempt, but his vulnerability in one case makes him weaker in the other. And so Giuliani knowing that his biggest worry is, is in Georgia, actually, where his criminality is much more directly, you know, uh, at stake, gives him all the more incentive to flip and to get J6 at the federal level with Jack off the table so he can focus his limited resources on one venue. Rudy Giuliani is broke. We know this. We know that Trump never paid him. He's been begging for money for years. He probably can't afford to fight two cases. So by giving up to Jack... He, he, you know, makes it a one front war instead of a two front war. But that critical point is made there that in that moment, Jack has been asking not just key states, but dozens of states for every piece of info going through every basement, going through random basements in Nevada, in Las Vegas to find every stolen document every piece of info because what Jack is making clear is that what they did in Georgia and what they did in Arizona is something that they did in basically every state that wasn't super, super blue or super, super red. And that shows, and we're learning this for the first time today, that Jack has made this massive. And given that he's made it national, he's likely made it international as well. Don't be surprised if we see Jack in Scotland.